Hey guys, I just wanted to run a few ideas with you guys about how I build connections with clubs and try to speak to different clubs and try to get options and and things like that. The biggest thing for me personally is that you've got to work like your connections and you know I hear a lot that like yeah I don't have connections like I, I I've been only playing an amateur level I haven't been at that level yet where I have those so good connections so for my own personal experience like of course I think like yeah 99% of football players out there that are on the journey and the process of being a pro football player I think everyone has connections and that doesn't have to be through you know knowing a professional it could be not be like even through family for example through you know a friend's dad or you know a friend's friend of a friend you know just building contacts like this and it's quite crazy with how far you can get so like off of one of your friends that you used to play with in the past you could you could get so many contacts out of that one friend who also have so many contacts more you know what i mean so it's just almost like expanding your network of of like meeting meeting new people and really building those relationships and trying to figure out which ones are serious and which ones are not you know which ones are working which ones are not because the problems are when you start speaking to agents and things like that is that a lot of agents really speak really good and they're really in line with what they're saying but then when it comes to the, to the actual action of doing something that doesn't align with what they're saying I'm fortunate enough now to have worked hard and to build connections and to find out who who I can trust and who I who I kind of have pushed away to the side a little bit if you know what I mean. But in terms of like building your connections, that's in, in to do with like your contacts. So for example, you could contact a buddy of yours that you had played with before, ask if he knew someone that could potentially put you in contact with someone else. You know what I mean? So that's that's one way of like building connections and an example of that is I like I'm fortunate enough to have already been playing at a pro level so I've been very lucky to play with some very good and yeah talented players who have also experienced really good opportunities in other regions as well so for example I just right now I contacted a friend of mine maybe uh, three or four days ago just saying look hey bro I I don't have a club right now you know I know you know how I play and how I'm like my mentality and you know what I'm trying to achieve in life um, Do you know anyone that could potentially help me out? Do you have a manager that's kind of helping you or has some connections in other regions or you know back in the same region where I was playing before and uh, If they could help me out essentially Yes, yeah, so sorry about the cut uh, Isis came home, so you know, we prepared a lunch together and just chilled. But just to get back to on topic, what I was talking about, people trying to help you out. So I got in contact with my friend two days later. The, I got on the, the phone with uh, this agent that he had in, in England, who's put me directly in touch with, in this club in Iceland and has contacts all around Scandinavia. So that's something pretty cool. Another way that you could kind of try as well as to just through cold emailing people to be honest that's really time consuming and and very difficult to get positive feedback with you don't really get so many responses back you want to try and get the connections to through people and to end up trying to call people calling coaches calling agents who have connections with people and try to get in touch in that way but not through saying that that's the only way because like i said of course there's other ways through cold emailing people you could also just turn up at a club and ask if you can train like in the previous video michael did in uh nec nijmegen uh there's also yeah just also through um the internet now you know you can go onto websites of the club try get contacts of coaches even it's more difficult this way than going through connections and contacts but still very possible so like I said, with what was failing for me was really I was trusting the wrong people essentially at some point. So I was figuring out who who I should trust, who I should um, who I should kind of follow because you have to make some decisions then about which agents you want to kind of work with 
and move on their kind of path and which ones you have to like leave to the side a little bit until something's 100% there. So previously I put my trust in which ended up being not the best option. Not saying that they weren't working hard, not that it didn't, like things just didn't work out there. Another big one is that when you put your feeders out, you have to be also patient. So you can't just go every day and say what's happening, what's happening, what's happening. Because in clubs that have time, have also the possibility of saying, look, we can get another player like him. So if he's going to be like this and that's his attitude, then they don't really respond well to that, to be honest. So you've got to be patient and also apply the right kind of pressure. It just started raining like crazy outside. So, um, so being patient and then also like focus on the things that you can control so that you might have to go in and do a trial game, for example. And then in that trial game, you want to be 100% fit, match quality fit, which is really difficult to do when you're training by yourself. But even just to go out there, keeping busy, keep doing the right work, keeping your mind positive and good and having confidence and to go into places and just really believing that you're going to kill it because that's that's something that you can control. You know, it's not always possible that you can control that, you know, you have a club there the next day, you have a club here this week, you have a club here that week, you know. That's something you can't really can control, but you can always control with your mood and about your training and about your mentality, about going into places with a, po with a positive mindset. And that's something that's really really beneficial and just to talk through about how I've kind of got through my con got to my uh, contracts so I went over from New Zealand I went straight into Birmingham City the uh, contact there was through my uncle actually so he got a contact with a coach at the club with the under 18s and he allowed me to train with the under 23s he got my profile around the club so I was just there training for a week or something that's how I came to Europe. That didn't work out. So while I was there, I didn't really know how things worked here coming from New Zealand. I was doing quite well in New Zealand and I was a young, you could say like talent. And I came out of that opportunity at Birmingham. Like there were some problems in the club there, whatever, it doesn't matter. And I just got a random message on Facebook. Just out of the blue, complete crazy. I was back in London at my auntie's house after the Birmingham trial with nothing. This random message came up. Come into Italy, I have a team for you. They are playing in the third tier at the moment and it could be a good place for you to start and build up your career in, uh, in, in Europe. So I messaged them back obviously and said, yeah, okay, you know, I, I really am in England at the moment so I wanna I want to keep staying here and seeing what's around here first. I made a few calls back to my uncle, back to my family, and we made a decision together as like a team and said like, why not go? And the worst thing that could happen is that they say no or that you don't like it and then you come back and try again. So this like scout put me in touch with the club, went there for a training, they offered me a contract directly after the training. So I pretty much, I took it straight away to be honest with you, I was super excited, super happy. That's how I got one contract. The second contract was in New Zealand at Auckland City. So that was something as well because I was playing in the under 17 World Cup. The head trainer was Aaron McFarlane and Darren Baisley. And Aaron McFarland has just taken over Auckland City in that time in 2011 and he was like co-coaching with a guy, a Spanish guy, Ramon Trebulier and he was the current coach of Auckland City like now also and also when I was speaking there so he was involved with our under 17s, knew who I was, knew about my football academy experience, knew where I was in Italy and I got in contact with him, sent him a few games of my previous, um, like my my updated like CV and like some like the latest games that I had played in, just so he could see that I was still doing my things, you know. So that was all good. So I got there pretty much through this really good contact because I already knew the the trainer. So so that's that's how I got that contract there. After that, I really wanted to come to Europe, so. 
I was just plugging away on, on like the internet and through contacts to get in touch with agents. So I managed to get uh, a trial actually back in Latvia and that ended up not working out through an agent. And then my uncle, he has, uh, he has a relationship with a club in the Czech Republic through his business partner. And he said, come over, play some games and you know, keep fit and that you have a contract here. So I went and stayed with him pretty much for six months and got a contract there. Then after that, the, the Achilles thing happened. So that was during the winter break. And after that, I was just doing a lot of work trying to contact agents and things like that. And I'd actually agreed to go to a club in New Zealand. Crazy story. Back with, um, yeah, another coach who I knew. Uh, everything was done except the contract wasn't completely signed. I booked my flights, everything. I was, I was going like three days away. Out of the blue, a scout contacted me again through WhatsApp, who I have a good relationship with over the last like year before, just in general chat. He was bringing players in and out of like Achilles and helping like New Zealand players and. You know, I won't say his name just for respect, but you know, bringing uh, players around, doing business around, um, mostly around the Scandinavia region. He messaged me saying, there's a club in the first tier in Slovakia. It's a really good opportunity. I know your situation with the club in New Zealand, but you have to go and check it out. Two or three days, they'll make a decision on you. And you have to go, it's an unbelievable opportunity. So. I just had to tell like my girlfriend and my family, look, I gotta go. Like this is something too big for me to like pass up on. So I went and I had a really good training as the first days and obviously impressed, picked up a contract. So off that, just out of the blue again, not from nothing to something. It was really crazy. So that's that's pretty much my stories of how I picked up contracts and the best way to to contact clubs and to build connections and get your next professional contract. That's it. I'm uh, glad I could share this conversation. If you have any suggestions or like any insights into this like topic, please put it down in the, the comments below and I'll try to respond as I can. You know, you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter and I will also respond to you guys there. So I would really appreciate your comments. Uh, like and subscribe to my channel if you want more content and yeah, I'll keep going.